Hello and welcome to PGTV News. Here are our top stories. It's graduation season. Find out what students are saying about their school experiences and their first steps into the future. Lakeland Electric is shutting down the coal burning Macintosh Unit 3. Find out when it will be decommissioned and what the options are to replace the unit. Hello and welcome to PGTV News. I'm Stephen Barnes. And I'm Tina Mann. It's that time of year again, graduation time. Many graduates from high school to college will flood to the RP Funding Center to receive either their diplomas or degrees. Polk State College recently had their 120th commencement ceremony. Polk State President Angela Garcia Falconetti said, graduation is the most gratifying time of the year and I thank you for sharing in this very special occasion. We celebrate our students, their perseverance, and all of their accomplishments that have propelled them forward on their paths to degrees. Florida Southern had their 136th commencement ceremony. Approximately 487 students received their diplomas, surpassing the record totals of spring graduates in 2017 and 2018. The Honorable Charles T. Kennedy, Chief Justice of the Florida Supreme Court and a former congressional leader was the guest speaker. And Polk State and uh, Florida Southern weren't the only ones. Florida Polytechnic University also held their graduation at the RP Funding Center. Nearly 300 graduate and undergraduate students received degrees. We caught up with a few of the students to find out how they feel about graduating. Hi, my name is uh, Stetson Gregorio. I'm a Science and Technology Management with a concentration in Logistics, and I am so stoked to be graduating today. This has been the accumulation of just tons of hard work, late nights with these guys right here, tons of like meetings with professors and one-on-one -on -one sessions and hours of lectures and videos, PowerPoints, and it's all finally come to an end, and I can happily say that I, uh, I learned a lot and I can go out of this with uh, my head held high. Uh, I'm Stratos Kartsunakis, uh, Science and Technology Management, and I'm uh, just super relieved to uh, be done with the four <laughs> years of college, but yeah. what I've taken from this is, you know, hard work, dedication, and, you know, persistence with everything and having a good attitude about life in general, so I'm glad to be graduating. I'm Emily Gates. I'm Science and Technology Management as well with a concentration in Logistics and Supply Chain Management. And it's been a great four years with a lot of wonderful professors who've become our friends, um, who've taught us a lot, a lot of good friends made, a lot of stuff learned, so I'm really excited for today. The commencement speaker for this year's graduation was retired U.S. Air Force General and former astronaut Kevin P. Chilton. Class of 2019, you guys look great. You look fantastic parading down the aisle. I could pick out the electrical engineers in the crowd. Got standing with the, the hats. I like the lights. Showing a little spirit there. This is a huge milestone in your lives, folks, and congratulations for achieving it. You know, you should be proud of yourself just as much as your family is proud of you. You've worked hard and you've earned this day. During the commencement, General Chilton told the graduates, learning should be a lifelong journey. Today is not the day to close the book on your education. He also advised them by saying, don't be afraid to change your dreams along the way. If you think today you know exactly what you're going to do with your degree, you may be wrong or you may be right. It doesn't matter. However, do not be afraid to change. Don't be afraid to spread your wings and try something. Those are some powerful words right there. Wise words from a wise man, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, and how cool is it that they got to use an astronaut in their graduation? <laughs> that, that is very apropos for uh, for STEM, you know, for Florida Polytechnic, a STEM school, to have an astronaut give their graduation speech. So that's, that's pretty neat. Very cool. Lakeland Electric announced its plans to shut down the CD Macintosh Unit 3 by fall 2024. The coal-powered generator costs about $20 more per megawatt hour than utilizing the natural gas Unit 5. Unit 3 has been offline since February when the company discovered the 102-foot scrubber tank needed $1.4 million in emergency repairs. Joel Ivey, the utility's general manager, said in preparing to decommission Unit 3, Lakeland Electric will need to reduce staff and must find a way to make up a 136 megawatt shortage to assure power during peak hours. In the future, after Unit 3 has been decommissioned, Lakeland City Commission could ask Tampa Electric to provide power to some Lakeland households. This deal could take six months to a year before its implementation. 
Another option is to expand Lakeland Electric's solar capacity. According to Lakeland Electric's Assistant General Manager of Production Beckham, it would take a minimum of three years to be operational, with the primary limitation being finding and purchasing suitable land. The utility would also need to figure out how to store power generated for rainy days. Sounds like a lot of decisions need to be made. Yeah, and I know this wasn't an easy decision they came by. They had to really weigh the options on repair, the cost of repairs versus the productivity of, you know, once they do repair it. And I think it was just one of those decisions where they, they just, just didn't. Lose too yep, much money. it just didn't work out. Well, in Polk County, the forestry department is conducting controlled burns. And these burns help keep Polk County safe from uncontrolled wildfires. Polk County's Public Information Officer Chris John Keir spoke with a forestry representative to learn more about how homeowners can keep their homes safe from wildfires. Hi, I'm Chris John Keir from Polk County Fire Rescue. Today we're here with Todd Klanda from the Florida Forest Service to talk about wildfire and how to keep your residents safe. Yeah, the biggest thing is if the fire doesn't get to the house, the house won't burn. So there's a lot of things that homeowners can do as far as uh, raking pine needles away from their house and, and leaves away from their home. Uh, taking a look at their bushes around their house and if there's a lot of dead vegetation in those bushes, remove that dead vegetation. Uh, there's a lot of simple things that can be done, uh, such as watering your lawn. Uh, a lot of those small things make big difference. Now on the house itself, is, are there things that, you know, sometimes leaves fall on top of the roof, they get in the gutters? What, what should residents do about that? Uh, yeah, they really need to take a look at their house from the top-down approach. Uh, they need to look at the roof to make sure that there's not a whole lot of leaf litter or uh, pine needles on the, on the structure itself. And if there is, just get up and brush those off. Um, look at the, if they have any gutters on the house. Make sure those gutters are cleaned out because those embers that happen from a wildfire tend to collect wherever the leaves and leaf litter uh, will collect on a house. I read something about uh, actual screening, like your port screen or screens over your, your air vents. It, are, is that an important thing for the residents to know? It's, it's very important because if you keep, once again, if you keep those embers out of the house, the chances of the home igniting are, are just that much less. Uh, we recommend an eighth of an inch metal screen for any type of vent on the outside of the house. Um, and, and anywhere around that you, you have screening. Now, as far as uh, finding, you know, the area, the residence itself, some of these houses, especially here in Polk County, are way back in the woods, way off the beaten path. What are some of the things residents really need to pay attention to do to prepare for that kind of stuff? Uh, right now, it, 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 you, you hit it right exactly. Um, if we don't know that they're there, then we don't know that it's out there. So if the fire's coming through, the only way we're going to know where your house is is if you have it clearly labeled uh, using uh, numerics on a, on a post that we can see. So to have your address number really visible from the closest entry point to the main to a main yes. highway is really important. Yes. On the mailbox, uh, large numbers, and, and that's the kind of thing you guys are going to be looking for when you're out yeah, there. Yeah, because we're going to know where the fire is because of the smoke, but we're not going to know where the residents are if they're not labeled. So knowing where those are at is going to make our job a lot easier because we're going to be able to go and defend those homes um, much faster. Well, Todd, I appreciate it. Thank you for everything not you guys do you. keeping us safe. Not a problem. Make sure your house isn't on fire. You know, it never gets too, too old reminding people to stay safe. Absolutely. Yep. Pete, speaking of people who keep us safe, the Lakeland Police Foundation will host the annual Fallen Heroes Memorial 5K on Saturday, May 18th, 2019. This fun family event provides the opportunity to show support for local law enforcement and raise funds for the Lakeland Police Foundation. Portions of the proceeds will support the Retired Police Canine Care Program. The purpose of the Retired Canine Care Program is to provide wellness and medical services for retired LPD canines at no cost to the current owner for the remainder of the retired canine's life. The race will take place at Three Parks Trail in Lakeland. Participants will meet at the YMCA located at 3620 Cleveland Heights Boulevard. Please remember the race will begin at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. Kind of like uh, Medicaid for, for dogs. For dogs, right? it is. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, AARP for dogs. <laughs> I mean, you got to keep them safe. They've hey, done they a good burned job. it. They, they burned have. it. They've worked hard and provided a valuable service to the residents. So. Absolutely. Well, do you ride the bus? Are you a Citrus Connection bus rider? Well, soon there will be some high-tech upgrades to some of the Citrus Connection buses. 
There will be free Wi-Fi and mobile charging stations for riders. A pay-as-you-go app could also be available. About 2.4 million rides were counted in Polk County in 2018, representing a 24% drop since 2014. Citrus Connections Board wants to improve the public's perception of the transit system. Lakeland Mayor Bill Mutz, who sits on the Citrus Connections Board of Directors, said, if we want to improve the public's perception, we need to do it through our product. Product drives perception. The transit agency has an agreement with Avail, the maker of its reloadable plastic smart card system, to create an online website where riders can add funds to their card without visiting the downtown terminal or Citrus Connections office. Well, that sounds like some really uh, much needed tech updates to be able to reload that card without actually physically having to be at the station. That's that's right, nice. absolutely, and also the improvements to the Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. I mean, that way more business people may consider riding the bus yeah. because they can actually be working as they commute and get part of their workday already yeah, knocked out. Absolutely, some definite benefits. Well, the Florida Department of Transportation will hold an open house format public meeting from 5.30 to 7 p.m. on Thursday, May 23, 2019 at the Peggy Brown Building. That's located at 215 South Lake Avenue in Lakeland. The topic of discussion will be a centralized transportation hub in Lakeland. An upcoming study by FDOT will identify and evaluate potential sites for a new transportation hub. This hub would facilitate connectivity between all modes of travel and access, including local bus, inner city bus, inner city rail, bicycle, pedestrian, carpooling, ride sharing, taxis, and the transportation network companies like Uber and Lyft, vehicle sharing and bicycle sharing, among others. The Lakeland Intermodal Center would serve as a mobility center for the region. Hmm. That's kind of cool. That is cool. I mean, I mean we're already kind of like a, a transportation hub for right. the roadways. Why yeah, don't it looks like they're trying to mirror some of the same things that are in like Tampa and Orlando mm -hmm. area where, you know, you can go to one place and have a lot of different yeah. options for transportation. The Lakeland Tropics recently hosted U.S. Open Cup which is a 105-year-old national soccer tournament where the country's top amateur and pro teams compete against one another. This past week, the Tropics played the Villages Soccer Club, and in doing so, the Tropics made history because this is the first time Polk County has hosted the tournament. We spoke with Tropics representative Brian Ackley to learn more. Exciting night here at Lake Myrtle Sports Complex as the U.S. Open Cup makes its debut in Polk County. The Lakeland Tropics hosting the Villages SC. It's the U.S. National Soccer Championship, so it's a very prestigious event to be a part of. Only 84 teams in the entire United States qualify. Lakeland is one of them, and really only about maybe 30 or 40 cities actually get a chance to host the U.S. Open Cup game. So this is really a great opportunity for Auburndale and the Tropics and Polk County to showcase itself. Uh, ESPN is here tonight televising the game on their platform. So really just a historic moment in Polk County sports as the uh, Tropics and the Villages play in the U.S. Open Cup tonight. The Villages Soccer Club defeated the Lakeland Tropics on penalty kicks after both teams battled to a one-to-one -one tie through 90 minutes of regulation time and another 30 minutes of scoreless overtime. The Tropics will have to wait one more year to see if they can obtain a win in the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. The Tropics will open their U.S. League Two season on Saturday, May 11th at Bryant Stadium in Lakeland when they host the Daytona Soccer Club. Kickoff is 7 p.m. We want to congratulate Weber International University men's bowling team for winning another national title. The team was all smiles after winning the 2019 Intercollegiate Team Championship. Coach Del Warren said, We spent a great deal of time teaching the kids how to manage expectation. He also said, What I'm most proud of is that they had a great regular season and that they were also able to deliver, come together, and have their best performance when it mattered most. This is Weber's sixth team national championship and the program's third since 2012. Congratulations, guys. Well, that wraps up the show. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to tune in next week for another installment of PGTV News. We'll see you next time.